Security is a huge threat, both for the United States and for any democracy trying to deal with it. The U.S. has been gung-ho in going after the Al-Qaeda and the ISIS over the last few years. Now, we have with us Shalab Kumar, who is an Indian-American businessman. Uh, he's a Trump supporter and uh, has funded the Trump campaign. Uh, Shalab, you've been an ardent Trump supporter. Give us a little bit of sense on why you decided to support Trump. What was the reason? Well, uh, RHC, Republican Hindu Coalition, has four core principles. We call them four Fs. First is free enterprise. Second is fiscal discipline. Third is family values. Fourth is firm foreign policy. So in all those Fs, four Fs, uh, Donald Trump stands head and shoulder above anybody else. And if I was to score those four Fs with respect to Hillary versus uh, Trump, uh, I would, uh, I don't think I would be giving this, uh, this score to anyone. I would probably be a lot closer in Bill, if it was Bill Clinton who was a candidate. But for Hillary, I don't think I could even give zero. Can I, can I pick zero up? Zero to, uh, if, if uh, I don't, never give a 10. <laughs> so nine, if I give to Trump, it will be zero or minus two to Hillary on all four Fs. Speaking of one of those four Fs, you said family values. So certainly a lot of things that Trump has said conflicts with how people perceive his family values. Perception is very different than legislation. Okay? We have factories in Iowa. Iowa is just one of the states we have factories. You uh, tend to think that, oh, that is more of a you know, rural area and there should be a lot more family values. And you find uh, very quickly, as we first bought our business in Iowa, that the legislation is such, it encourages young girls, 18-year-old girls, 19, 20-year-old girls to have ch child. Children from, if you have uh, unwed mothers who have children from different fathers, and if you can get a certificate you can get it from, you know, a system how, just like in India, here you get a certificate that they have some kind of a disability. They will make so much more money than a hardworking four-year college graduate engineer. That this is when I talk about family values, legislation uh, in the name of being, let's say, um, uh, uh, what would be the word? It will be that uh, they are kind, uh, they are supportive of the people who are in need. The legislation has gone to the extent that it encourages, it just encourages breakup of families, okay, rather than there is a marriage penalty. Let me ask, a lot of people have criticized uh, the Trump side uh, for not having enough experience on policy, on global affairs. Do you think he's ready to take on a presidency to deal with the world? Actually, that is a probably on that score, he should get a 20 instead of 10. <laughs> because look what all the experienced people, and I do work on Capitol Hill quite a bit. So uh, Paul um, uh, is a friend of mine, and Speaker of the House. Uh, Mitch McConnell is a friend of mine. All these uh, uh, leaders in the House and Senate, uh, they are friends, and I've worked with them for quite a while. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and criticize them, but look what experience has gotten, to, uh, gotten the country. We were uh, $9 trillion in debt for more than 200 years of our existence. That is including so many wars, Revolutionary War, then Civil War, then First World War, Second World War, Korean War, Vietnam War, then First Iraq War, then the Second Iraq War. So what nine you're trillion. Is Trump will get us, will get the U.S. out of it. But Trump it, it, will be in the right direction. You need a a, a businessman, an outsider, a a non-politician. Uh, we have a lot of trade dealings with China ourselves, and he talks about normally talks about. 
we businessmen, business community laughs at the way our uh, politicians, both Republican and Democrat, they assign our trade negotiators. They could not negotiate a buyout of a hot dog stand. And, and they are going to be negotiating with China? Come on. Well, he is known as a successful businessman, but he's also been bankrupt before. Does that put, make you worry about his fiscal sense? You see, uh, I will give you another example. When you say bankrupt, okay? Mm -hmm. You know Texaco and Pennzoil? Yes. Okay, who filed bankruptcy? I don't Would know. you consider the Texaco to be a bad company? No. There is uh, American laws provide to file bankruptcy in case there is a bad situation. Okay, people file bankruptcy when there is a threat of some kind of an action. So that bankruptcy is well within the American law. So it's not that he's gone out there and cheated anyone. Okay, it's a normal procedure. You know, we were talking the other day and you talked about uh, Trump made some statements which obviously stand out his statement on women, and you said it was locker room talk. Explain to me how you justify some of the statements Trump has made. You see, first of all, I will make this statement to you. If we are going to elect the uh, president of the United States, the most powerful democracy on earth, and the leader of the free world, on the basis of what uh, Trump said 11 years ago in a locker room talk, or for that matter, I will even say that, Hillary Clinton defended the rapist of a 12-year-old girl, okay, and bragged about it, how smart of an attorney she was. She knew he was a rapist. But as a defense lawyer, <laughs> that's what you do. <laughs> that was her job to get, her, get the rapist off. Or what are all the indiscretions Bill Clinton had with respect to all the women, uh, you know, that came across. So, but we cannot decide the future of the free world on the basis of these type of things. We have, you were, I, I just heard you talking about a security issue. We are in a third world war. We have an enemy that has declared war on us. The radical Islamist extremists, they have declared a war on us. We are in the midst of a war and we are worried about what he said 11 years in a locker room and what Hillary Clinton uh, uh, defended the rapist or what uh, Bill but Clinton Kumar, did. A lot of people have turned around and are disappointed with both candidates, if I may say so. 60% of them came out and said they're disappointed. Does it talk really? Do either of these individuals, do they represent what America should have as the president? Let me also, also give you an example, okay? What would people think today? You know, we all think JFK was a great president, correct? How about I'm, people if they come, agree, to know, okay. if come to know that he had an affair with Marilyn uh, Monroe? Okay, Marilyn Monroe. So then what would you say over there? Oh, no, no longer forget about the, uh, the march to the moon and have uplifting the country. In my mind, by the way, I am a Republican, but to me, JFK was an inspiration. He was an inspirational president. I admired him throughout my life. He Close. certainly talked about a lot of equality. Whereas, you know, and uniting the country, where a lot of Trump's talk is about creating divisions. I don't believe so. I think it's Hillary who is creating the divisions. Okay? Men versus women, um, uh, young versus old, uh, gays versus, or that community versus the other community. She is the one who is dividing the, uh, the nation. With respect to uh, Trump, he is, I, it appears to me, is just like in your context, in India's context, just like Modi. Everybody said, oh, Hindu nationalist, it's going to come to an end. There is going to be a civil rights riots throughout the country. And he kept on saying development regardless of anything, regardless of caste, regardless of uh, religion, regardless of whatever. And uh, so is the same principle with Donald Trump, development, make America great again, uh, irrespective of who you are, look at what he has done with the Indian community. Okay, he has the first president candidate who has come out and approached an Indian community. Now, otherwise, they think, oh, he's a racist. He is attending the only non-white rally. Okay, ten thousand people come out. I mean, you know, it's all concoction of media. Mr. Kumar, you 
obviously are a businessman. Yes. And, and you understand business well. Do you think, is Hillary better for business or Trump better for business? There is not even a question. On a business side, I will give minus five to Hillary. <laughs> Okay, and Trump, instead of a 10, that side, F, I, I, I don't give a 10 to anybody. I said, I probably on that side, I'll have to give him a 12, 13. Because just look at this. Look at the overall picture. Okay, any businessman, any businessman can tell, uh, can reduce 10% cost when you are in crisis. Okay, that's your fiscal discipline, our second F. And here, what the politicians have made it to be, though you cannot cut. You can cut military, you can cut any branch of the government. If you are a businessman, you could be more productive, still cutting military spending, still cutting all the other domestic programs. I agree. You can be more a lot efficient. of businesses have you know, come up and spoken to us about you know, how Trump may be better for business. Mm -hmm. uh, there has been one more thing which has come up over time and again, and Trump has brought it up, that media has been a bit unfair. To Clinton. Do you think the media has been unfair to Clinton? To Clinton? Sorry, to, uh, to Trump. <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah. <laughs> to Trump. Right. I mean, you brought we, it up as well, right? right? That's right. We Why? have We have Clinton News Network. Yeah. I'm so, so sorry. I mean, I feel so bad. I'm such a fan of Wolf Blitzer, you know, from the 1990 when he was under the desk and was first, uh, first Iraq war. I was, uh, I was, became a fan of him. Okay, uh, he sort of still behaved okay, but when you have Donna Brazil passing out questions before the debate to the to Hillary, uh, what has CNN become? This is there's no question. CNN has become Clinton News Network. That I may agree, but <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Kumar, for joining us for this. You know. It, it, we get a great sense from uh, the American media on how this has been covered. We picked out a few newspapers this morning. Yes, um, uh, you know, certainly the, the no FBI leads on it, um, the, the, the finding that she is not guilty of any charges. Uh, but more interestingly, it was how kind of some of the tabloids they use, it's the, it's the use of surnames that always yeah. is interesting in certain medias they'll use. Uh, Hillary instead of Clinton, and in this one they use Donald instead of Trump. So it's quite surprising to see they call her Clinton, but while call him Donald, you know, showing the disrespect. So the, the media has been a bit biased in the coverage against uh, Trump. And you see, that has now again, I'll, I'll clarify something else also with respect to um, FBI Director Comey's statement. Right. He has not ended the probe of uh, the Clinton Foundation. He's not ended that. That is still a going on investigation and it's a criminal investigation. The one thing is just totally I'm amazed at. I don't know why doesn't uh, Clinton News Network pick it up, okay? That we have, she gets the money from the countries that are most repressive to women, okay? There isn't any other country like Saudi Arabia you know, if you uh, travel with your wife, with your daughter to uh, Saudi Arabia, you will know how discriminatory they are towards women. It's not second class citizen, it's third class citizen, and she takes money from them. Well, that's it, you know, that's for an FBI investigation, certainly. We are unable to comment on that. Um, you know, that's why the FBI are on the case, but. Uh, FBI it, is not going to decide <laughs> they, on whether uh, Saudi Arabia is a treats their women as third world citizens. They, third, but they're they will decide the only. Clinton Foundation they're and, they're and only we don't whether there was something illegal yeah. done or not. With yes. you, with you on that. Yeah.